and welcome to the Pigya Rora show where we discuss entrepreneurship and law with people who have been there and done that my name is Pigya Rora founder of PA legal and intellectual property law firm in India and today we have very inspiring rob hana with us so let us directly dive into a conversation with him so hi rob how are you doing i'm very well thank you how are you thank you so much for having me on your show Thank you so much, Rob. And uh, you know, I have a little twist here. So uh, probably I'll ask the question that you ask all your uh, guests, and the question is the icebreaker question. On, <laughs> the scale, <laughs> on the scale of one to ten, ten being very real, how real would you rate the TV series Suit? Very, very good. So I'm consistent because when I'm interviewed on other shows as well, people try and trick me up on that. I give it a five. So the reason I give it a five is because um, there is some reality to the law, but I have to give it no more than a five because for those people obviously practicing the law, seeing corporate lawyers suddenly switch to being litigation lawyers, cases moving as quickly as they can within an episode, within a matter of hours is not necessarily realistic. Um, and bear in mind suits, you know, suits are not what they used to be. Now we've been in the pandemic, people are probably more smart casual, there's more flexible, more remote working. So I give it a five. I think there's a lot of Hollywood, a lot of entertainment. There is some references to the law, but it's a long way off being being 100% real. So uh, yeah, I sit in the middle with a five. Awesome. So I expected that answer, but thank you <laughs> for sharing your views. <laughs> thank you. So Rob, can you start uh, by telling us your life story and how you became what you are today? Yeah, thank you. So I grew up in uh, Leicester, which is at the time, um, you know, quite a quite an um, emerging city. Um, but really, when I went from Leicester, I moved to Leeds. And that was where I went to university, because I wanted to sort of break out of the bubble of, of, of home. Um, so I'm one of um, three boys. So I'm the middle child. A lot of people say they can tell that when they meet me that I'm definitely the middle child. Um, but I always wanted to be in business or have my own business or connected to something in entrepreneurship because my grandfather ran a very successful law firm in the United Kingdom in Leicestershire. Um, and when I was younger, I used to do work experience in his law firm. So I'd do the stapling, the photocopying, getting the copies, all the really important jobs I tell people that make the law firms of that generation tick. So that was really where I got my inspiration for at some point in my career, wanting to jump into the world of um, entrepreneurship. So stayed around Leicestershire, went to school there, had a wonderful education. I was very privileged and I'm exceptionally grateful for that education that I was gifted. Went up to Leeds because I wanted to sort of expand my wings. Uh, loved the north of the UK, met some real great friends there, lifelong friends. And then I wanted to, to move to the heart of London. You know, I really wanted to uh, to be in London. I wanted to be the first person in my family that went into the city of London. I wanted to be the first person that really kind of, you know, created their own business and, and emulated my grandfather's success. So I moved after 2008 into the city of London, the worst time to start a career because it was the financial crash. It was the Lehman's Brothers crash. And I moved into the recruitment talent space, which is what I'm in now and have been for the last decade. Um, and it was really tricky because, you know, a lot of people were being laid off with jobs. There was a lot of redundancies. I was worried about my own job. I was fresh out of university. I didn't have a lot of skills, technical skills or training. Um, but what kept me in my job when others were losing their jobs and redundancies around me was my work ethic, my attitude, my commitment, um, you know, my willingness to want to get better and not give up. And I think without having that work ethic that perhaps was instilled for me from a young age, from my grandfather and various other people in my network, you know, potentially I could have, I could have, my career could have been cut short right from the start. So anyway, I moved to a FTSE 250, Heart of London was there and it was really good reflecting on it now, start Starting in a really tough market teaches you a lot of lessons, very harsh, very early on. At the time, you don't see it because you just want immediately to be great at the job or to have everything come to you naturally. But it's not always that straightforward. So anyway, I, I was rubbish at the job when I first started for about a year and a half. 
Um, at a time, then I moved on. So my boss left and actually headhunted me and took me across to another organization. And that's really where it started to click. I got some hands on training development. I was part of that team that helped scale that business. Um, you know, and that was something I really, really enjoyed. And that gave me the skills, the confidence, the, the kind of the self belief to want to set up my own business. And so I started my own business, Casey Partners in 2016, which is in the legal recruitment space with, you know, really wanting to emulate what my grandfather's success was in terms of his legal legacy, in terms of being one of those prominent law firms, I want to emulate that in a modern 2021, 2022 and beyond approach and really kind of be the number one legal talent solutions content creation firm that's building a global legal community, helping so many people and inspire so many people to be the best out of their careers and be happy, be happy in their jobs. And that's sort of where I've, I've got up to, to the to the present day. Awesome. Awesome, Rob. And uh, you, you know, I always see your profile and I get so much inspired that he's doing investments. He's in, in into the space of legal recruitment. He's doing so much stuff and I get to learn. I personally get to learn so much from uh, your sharing. So thank you so much. And uh, to the listeners, I'll want, I want to reiterate a few points that Rob focused on. So one was, uh, you know, ethics of doing business that you inculcated from your grand uh, grandfather. And the second, what I got is the importance of training and skill development that you got from the your previous organization so thank you for sharing that so now i would like to ask you how did you transform like from management from your education and management to uh, working in a space which is law and an industry which is completely different from management but requires management a lot so how did you transform and what was your thought process behind it yeah, so I always knew with with management and business, I wanted to do something in the in the business sphere. And I always say to people, you know, some experience, some education is all good, and it can build and complement your profile. So, you know, sometimes you just have to have internal self belief. I've taken a lot of risks in my career, so I have done a lot of pivoting. So, I mentioned previously that I left my um, initial FTSE 250, which is a big global company, very safe to join this small, medium enterprise, help and scale exit. That, you know, that was a risk because you're, you're joining an unknown entity, and then I helped scale that business, and then I left the directorship post where you know at a good age I was earning good money I was, I was being successful and um, to start my own business you know put my own skin in the game and start from zero so I'm a big advocate of you know everything that you you do you have to be risk I'm a very risk-taking person and I know for the legal profession that's not always easy but I do think at some points in your career, you do need to prepare to take a bit of a risk. So for me, having that sort of management education, that self-belief, having a lot of wider skill sets through other experiences I had, that helped me and made me feel confident enough to take the risk and take the step to wanting to transition into legal. And because I knew what my why was. You know, a lot of people don't know why they do what they do. A lot of people go to work to have a job to pay the bills to survive, and they're not actually living. I love what I do. I'm passionate because I know that I want to leave a legacy for the legal profession. I want to emulate what previous generations of my family did for the profession in my time and make it a real impact. So every day I get up, I know why I'm doing it. So, you know, a lot of people, in my view, are just having a job and just going through the motions and it's fine, but there's no real passion and purpose. So I would encourage everyone to think, why do you work? Why do you do what you do? What is it because you just think that's the way that you should be perceived what you're doing? Are you truly happy? And if you really ask those soul searching questions and can find that purpose, you'll honestly be far, far happier. So every day, yes, I have good days, bad days, terrible days, doubtful days, but that's just the nature of the world. But because I know what my why is and what I want to leave, um, you know, I'm super passionate about it. And that helped me again with my natural transition into the legal space. Awesome, awesome. And you know, it's, it's so implied that whenever we speak to you, we hear you, we read your posts, the passion, I think it's implied in everything that you create. So uh, it, you don't have to mention that I am passionate about it. I think anybody who is following you just feels it from oh, the heart that Rob is so passionate about the work he does. So uh, yeah. That's very kind of you. 
Thank, thank you so much. So, uh, so then, uh, you know, again, a question just popped up in my mind that managing so many things together, a podcast, then LinkedIn audio experiences, Clubhouse, then your firms and uh, your investment projects and things like that. How do you manage to do that? How your workday looks like and some insights on how do you uh, take care of everything together? So I think it's, you know, you very kindly mentioned all of those things that I'm involved with. You know, I'd also add that being a being a hands on dad is really important to me as well. And, you know, that's something I do invest time and want to be present because that's something I didn't necessarily have myself. And so I've made the commitment definitely to once I became a father to be really hands on and be there on top of whatever goes on in the business world. And that for me was one of the main inspirations also for setting up my business so I can have that freedom and flexibility to do that um but in terms of things that i do i think it's planning each day the night before it's having structure it's having systems and processes it's having the right team around me and it's knowing what i can and can't commit to so you know you mentioned some of the um investments so i sit on the board of various recruitment and legal tech startups um you know some of those aren't as demanding as you might think they may just be one meeting a quarter which you know with prior planning you can do when it comes to speaking engagements podcast requests again i can fit it into one or two hour schedules so i think if you're very um i'm a big advocate for having um assistants or people that can help manage you if you're not very good because i'm a typical entrepreneur a million and one ideas so having some sort of people that can support you and manage you would be super super helpful and um, and then like you say it's just making sure that you're very intentional with your time you know you've got to be very intentional with your time i think a lot of people sometimes will take a meeting or will say yes to something and it's dragging them in different directions you need to know what your goals are you've got to know why you're working to those things and be very very intentional and it is okay to say no to some things you know i'd love to say yes to so many more things but that's why i have produced things like the legally speaking podcast because i get so many aspiring lawyers current practicing lawyers asking me questions related to careers and i thought well we could create something that could really serve that community because I can't have so many one-on-one individual meetings all the time because obviously I've got to service clients, I've got to run the business, I've got other things I need to be doing. So it's actually, well, rather than just sort of saying, no, what can I do to add value to my community? So yeah, a lot of planning, a lot of scheduling, a lot of systems, a lot of processes, being regiment with sleep, getting up in the right times, and um, all of that good stuff helps. And, and just being involved in things you're passionate about, which I keep mentioning. So if you're passionate enough and it means enough to you, you'll make it work. If not, you'll make an excuse. Awesome, awesome. So Rob, you know, uh, I resonate with this so much and uh, I feel uh, young entrepreneurs and young lawyers, I think somehow they fail in implementing systems. So do you have some uh, points they should keep in mind while implementing or maybe who are just starting to implement systems and processes together and managing self because I think it all starts with managing self and then it goes towards uh, managing the team or managing people so do you have some points for them yeah so I think always think of your frequently asked questions that you get asked create templates for them so you've got a lot of bank templates which then can just be tweaked so you're not starting from scratch from your typical frequently asked questions other things I would use resources so there's a great um calendly for example it's a little thing but it's great for interview scheduling it saves so much time with back and forth trying to get times in the diary removes all the headaches you can just immediately set up a zoom invite within that so you don't have to do all the manual anything that you can do that is very easy to be automated automate it you know i know that might sound tricky and lawyers don't like the sound of that but you'll be amazed Look at your working day and how many of those manual tasks from diary scheduling to meetings management, whatever it is, you know, you don't you can just get that all automated and that can save you a lot of time. And as I say, planning time box, time chunking as well, you know, put tasks that you want to do and then block it into actual times and then action it that way. So that's just a few things that I do to make sure that I can be as efficient as possible. And as I say, there's no harm in saying no to things that don't serve you. I think a lot of the times we try to help as many people as we can, and that's brilliant, but you can't help others if you don't help yourself. So you need to make sure you've got yourself sorted before then you can go out and serve your community. Awesome, be self-sorted, use uh, small little tools, but as Rob said, and I have also experienced it, it will save you a lot of time and a, uh, a lot of mental pressure as well. I think we give 
a lot of pressure to our brains remembering stuff instead of putting them everything on the calendar and be happy about it and probably relax you know don't be afraid don't try and do everything you know if it's not your area outsource it you know particularly if there's someone that you know that can do it better than you um then outsource it you know and i appreciate you know it may always come down to budgets but you'll be amazed even even websites like fiverr where if you're looking to try and get someone to do if you're not good at graphics and you're trying to start some new content you know and you don't want to use canva you know hire someone just for an hour to do some graphics for you to produce some content for you and then you can obviously produce that and put it out there or if you know you don't like producing so much videos you know hire someone that can help you edit those videos whatever it might be um related to trying to get your message out there as an entrepreneur or you know if you're looking to try and write a business plan and you're looking for some guidance have mentors have people that have been there done that that could help you all of that great stuff will be significantly time saving and make you more efficient awesome awesome just just so much uh, gratitude about whatever you said because i think all these little tips are so helpful like the importance of mentors in our uh, career for example if i want to start with content writing i have to start from scratch so it's better to ask somebody who has already done it so how how i should go about it and probably i'll have a little guidance for that that would save a lot of time that i'll spend on researching stuff exactly because they've had the headaches they've invested the time they've had the pain points so they can provide you all the solutions to that pain point you would have and so it's it's really really strategic and so you know what may take you 5 hours may take an expert in their field 10 minutes that's the reality yeah. and so you know it's really worth investing and in having those people around you absolutely amazing so rob now coming to your podcast so tell us how did you start it and what was the idea behind it and, and let's take it forward uh, from there yeah and i must say the legally speaking podcast i know we're everywhere now and the number one sort of known in terms of legal but it is a real team effort i have the the real pleasure of hosting the show but i do want to sort of reference that we do have a production team we have an editorial team we have a scripting team we have a whole team of people that contribute that to it but the whole reason for starting that is and i always say with kc partners which are our legal talent solutions content creation for we're not building just another database of transactional relationships with lawyers we want to build a community and the best way to build community is to add value and serve your community so i mentioned before we get a lot of questions from aspiring lawyers current practicing lawyers about how can i transition or how could i make partner or how do i win business or how can i get better at x y and z and so we thought well let's produce a podcast because when we started there wasn't many legal podcasts i think we were the we were the first ever uh, legal talent solutions firm to have launched a podcast and we started as a baby idea we took a risk because everything you do is risk because there's time attached so producing a podcast takes us away from our fee generating work which is the day to day legal recruitment but i wanted it to be different i wanted it to be disrupted i wanted it to stand out and i wanted it to be known as a place of serving a community and helping so we thought about right what do we want our topic of influence to be and if those of you who aren't familiar with topic for influence that is the pain point that you are trying to solve so when people are going into google and typing you know how how to be a lawyer or how to be a better corporate lawyer whatever our topic of influence was careers so all of the content that we produce for legally speaking podcast is typically related to careers and within that the the legal space and we have a lot of topics connected to it so and um, we've grown so we started as a baby and you know with consistency and quality we're now in the top 1.5% of podcasts globally we are sponsored by clio one of the top legal tech providers in the world they invested 110 million last year into the world of legal tech we're delighted to be partnered ring with them we've had some of the world's most significant legal thought leaders we've had the president of the the law society in the uk stephanie i boyce we've also had some fun some celebrities carol baskin from tiger king and everything in between and we really talk about legal tech we talk about diversity equity inclusion mental health we talk about as i mentioned the careers and how to really make the best out of legal careers different stories inspirational stories people who started at high street firms who then went on to be in big law um partnership a whole range of topics and it's been it's been wonderful and it's been a great experience we've built community we've learned a lot and i'm just a real really really proud of where we started and where we're going and i always say we're still just 
getting started. We've got so much more content, so many more ideas, so many things to be thinking about. And we've just built a wonderful community and got to know great people and yourself included. You know, we've really been able to connect with more people around the world because it's a global show. We have people from the US, the UK, the Far East, from the Middle East, India, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So yeah, it's, it's, it's amazing what happens when you just take a risk and put yourself out there and uh, good things happen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So awesome. Uh, I, I know, you know, and I think being a host is such a joy that you get to connect with the guest, connect with the audience, because audience is directly going to ask questions to a host. So that connection in itself is such a beauty and two important points that you focused on was taking a risk and being consistent uh, with quality. So I think if we take care of these three elements in any business, it would just, you know, it would be a boom for the industry. So thank you so much for sharing that. So uh, Rob, can you share the process of, uh, you know, like, I, I'm sure people uh, after watching this show would be interested to launch their own podcasts as well. So would you like to share a, a process that you take uh, while probably with one guest, like what is the whole process that you follow from, you know, figuring out the person, then sending invitation, recording and a post recording. So what what is the kind of process you follow? Yeah, and the process has evolved over time because as when you first start, you're learning, and now we we've got a good a good process in place. Um, so what I would say, the first thing is we think about what are the key topics and what it because we're thinking about the community, right? And I said to you from the start, it's topic of our topic of influence to be a successful podcast. You need to ensure that you're serving a good pain point, so people want to come and listen to acquire that content so they're getting fulfillment they're getting inspired they're getting educated they want to keep coming back because they're getting value from it you can't be everything to everyone that's why so many podcasts do well because if you niche it down i think you can be highly successful so what do we do we think about some of the latest legal trends we think about what are some of the most frequently asked questions we think about some of the the biggest topics and some of the most influential things that are happening in the legal industry and then we actually um well now we actually get a lot of approaches as you can imagine so a lot of people come to us saying hey we'd like to come on and unfortunately not everyone can come on the show but if anyone listening to this would like to and has a good story then you know we can put you in touch with our production editorial team and we can have those conversations but if it was a guest that we wanted to get on like stephanie i voice the president of the law society we're big on promoting and discussing what needs to be done with diversity equity inclusion because we know that's where more needs to be done in the legal industry so the process would be would reach out to stephanie for example then we would have an initial Initial discussion. It's really important we have initial discussion, brainstorm ideas, understand what they would like to get from the show, what we would like to get from the show talk them through the the process from recording because we use a platform called riverside fm which is sort of focused for um podcasters we would then set a date with them um we would then also go to creating a script so we have a whole scripting team that does the full research into the individual. We don't actually give too much away before the show because we want people to be authentic and come across as themselves. Um, and then we would bring them on to the show. We have a little warm up. We have about five minutes before we go live. We ease them in. We, we kind of get them feel settled. We make them feel warm. We make them feel fuzzy. And they enjoy and have fun because we want to have fun with the experience as well. We'd obviously then do the recording and then we'd have a wash up session at the end. And then we would get to work with all the digital assets and media and representative assets that we have, which then we send to the guests um, afterwards. And then they basically get a whole suite suite of assets from graphics, videos, um, waveforms, quotations, transcripts, newsletter inclusions, all of that because we want to make sure they can get value for their time and service and share with their communities. So not only are we kind of giving value to our community, but it's a great way for them then to share with their communities. And then we also make sure sure that we send some thank yous and we keep a relationship and we keep them updated on how their progress on the charts are going. So we've just had Jake Shogger, who's become number one 
episode most listened to, most downloaded. So we keep in touch with people, let them know. And then also when they get significant events or things have happened, they've been awarded, been in the awards like Sana Shafi they, um, from Stride. They've just recently been shortlisted for and nominated for an award. Mayor Crockford, who's on LinkedIn, she's just been nominated for some social media awards. All of our guests, we keep in touch, we acknowledge, we, we shine a light on them because we want to carry on that relationship and also just you know give back. So it's, it's a real process from sort of initial discussion to an ongoing relationship with them because we're very focused on relationships and even if people are trying to promote their books or what have you we're helped with actually pushing those books and, and and sharing them with the community so it's a it's a fun process but it's really really all about them getting as much value from the discussion and as much as us kind of really trying to help them awesome awesome, awesome. so you know just from this conversation i think anyone who's listening at including me personally, will have 100 ideas of probably repurposing the content, maintaining yes. relationships and things like that. Because I think relationship building is also one of the ideas behind doing the podcast. Like people want to build relationships with guests, with audience and, and a community for themselves. So I think everybody will get at least 15 ideas that what they can do now. I would also say if people were really serious about taking their podcast to the next level, we also do give strategic counseling and advice um, and a service to people to actually launch a podcast. So we've helped law firms launch their podcast. We've helped individuals launch podcasts. So if people wanted to know more and actually get some real strategy about sort of how to get the topic of influence, how to get to the next level, how to understand hosting, all of these sort of production side and how to get distribution and all the things like you say, repurposing of the content you know you can use the web strategy written audio video and there's lots of sort of placements and stru- if anyone wants to know more about that then feel free to get in touch awesome so uh, i'll suggest everybody to follow rob on linkedin because he's most active there and you'll get so much value by just following him so yeah so rob uh, you know now as we are Proceeding towards the end, would you like to share some key takeaways for young legal entrepreneurs or people who want to just start their careers with entrepreneurship? How should they proceed and what are uh, top five skills they should focus on? Yeah, really good question. So I always like to to say there's, um, you know, when it comes to entrepreneurship, if you don't risk anything, you risk everything. Okay, so you have to be prepared with some form of entrepreneurship to take a risk, put yourself out of your comfort zone. I think that's super important. In terms of skills that I think are are equally very, very valuable as an entrepreneur, you need to be good at networking. You know, it's no surprise your network is your net worth. You know, it's your reputation. It's not who you know, it's who knows you. If people are singing and shouting and championing you when you're not at the discussion point or at the table, that's a good thing because you've built a reputation. So I think networking as big as your network can be the better because that will help you i think communication skills you've got to be able to communicate in various different forms so be that verbally maybe that might be written that might be in video whatever it is you need to have good communication skills I think you need to be able to sell. And that's a little bit controversial, but in anywhere in life, you have to be able to sell yourself. You have to be able to sell your career. You have to be able to sell your services, but in a, in a, in a professional manner that's fit for the industry that you're trying to do. I think you need to have those particular skill sets. You need to be focused on relationships. I can't tell you. Contacts are good, but relationships pay. So it's so important to have really good relationships and foster and nurture those uh, relationships. And the most important one, never, ever stop learning. Always, always be coachable, have mentors, have people that can train, be open to learning. And remember this, run your own race at your own pace. Okay, just because someone might be further ahead of you at this time, does not matter really really focus on yourself and if you don't give up no matter how hard it might be you will be successful and best of luck i'm rooting for you all but i thoroughly enjoyed today thank you so much for having me thank you so much rob i it uh, the podcast is absolutely valuable for me and my listeners and on behalf of everybody i thank you so much for being here Oh, no, the pleasure is all mine. I thoroughly enjoyed it. You're a wonderful host and you've said so many kind things. And I would just like to say you are amazing. People need to definitely share your podcast far and wide. Give it a rating, review, download and support you because you're brilliant. But thank you so much once again. Thank you.
Hey there, thank you for attending today's session. If you liked our conversation, do follow our channel and consider sharing it with a friend. My name is Prigya Arora, daughter of inspiring parents, alumna of IIT Khadakpur, engineer turned lawyer and entrepreneur, and now founder of PA Legal, where we help creators and innovators protect their intellectual property. Thank you.